Well, folks, how you doing? It is Monday, and uh, we are going to do another kit review. So today we're going to talk about a 135th scale uh, Willis MB, uh, which is the kits by a company called Tacom or Tacom. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce their name. <clears throat> Figure that out later. T A K O M. Yeah. I'm yawning. I should just love these unprofessional videos. Here's the kit. This is a super detailed model kit. And, uh, you know, I've just recently uh, heard about these guys. And I know that they're coming out with a series of these Jeeps. So, this one here comes with a trailer. And um, they're going to have an up-armored one. Who knows what other versions are going to have? Probably with a soft top, maybe uh, some that are used by the Navy or the Army Air Corps, you know, where they had them all checkered up and everything. So there was quite a few different variants out there during the war. And, uh, and of course, the GIs had, you know, uh, did some field mods to their vehicles as well. So anyhow, let's, uh, let's get the camera flipped around. I have a little contraption up here. Hopefully I can just come straight down on it and then uh, walk you through what's inside the box. Okay? Right off the bat, as, it, as with any good quality kit, you have uh, really nice box art suitable for framing. Okay? And uh, I really like to keep my box art if I can and uh, try not to destroy this. Um, this, this kit was a gift uh, for the holidays for me. Uh, from a dear friend. So, yeah, uh, TACOM, 135th scale, kit number 2126. U.S. Army quarter-ton utility truck with quarter-ton utility trailer and MP figure, um, a.k.a. the Willis MB, all right? Or a Ford GPW. Um, but looking at the kit, uh, we'll look at some greater details here to see which version that we're, uh, that we're talking about, but it looks nice. Okay. Uh, it's well presented. Uh, all the parts are shown here. Um, just some different imagery of the, of the vehicle. Okay. All right. We'll set this aside. So what we have here is the instruction booklet. Very nicely, uh, laid out, uh, good, durable, glossy material. And uh, there's some really nice line artwork on here, which you could probably frame that if you wanted to. Um, all right, got some cautionary statements in here, how to apply the decals, uh, painting the uh, uh, vehicle. There's a, a list of required paints there if you want to follow what the, the, the model is telling you to do. And uh, just a couple of other basic uh, tips on removing parts and uh, being careful. Now, this, there's some very delicate parts in this model. Uh, I'm here to tell you. So, uh, nice uh, layout here of all the parts that come with the kit. So go ahead and do a quick inventory of your parts to make sure that you have them all and, uh, and just do a good inspection, okay? Now, the kit's uh, laid out just like any other type of automotive kit. You're gonna start with the framework and you're gonna build that up and work on the engine assembly and get the engine transmission transfer case and everything installed until you get a rolling chassis. Uh, from that point, you start working on the body tub um, and all the other little minor details and components that go into it to come up with the fully assembled Jeep. All right, so we're not gonna to spend too much time on the, dec on, on not the decals, but the instructions but uh, I'll show you some, some interesting details in the kit when I show you the parts. All right, so instructions are very clear to the point where you don't need language telling you what to do, so it doesn't matter what language uh, you speak. If you can see pictures and follow directions, you're gonna be just fine, all right? The trailer, the trailer is a kit all by itself, and it is uh, depicted here. And then, of course, you have your different uh, configurations with uh, um, different star options, invasion stars, uh, different hood numbers. So you choose. Now, when I build this, it's going to replicate the Jeep that I built. 
and it'll have my markings on it. But uh, you have different options here, okay? Uh, included is the paint scheme for the figure that comes with it. That's something that I really need to, to improve my skills on is how to paint figures, okay? Real nice instructions, and of course, they're gonna do a little advertising in here of some of the other models that they work on. And uh, that's it. So, very nice. All right, I'm gonna put a white board down here so you can see the parts a little bit better. And we will start with the trailer. This is your Bantam trailer. And uh, you can see here that it's got the A-frame pieces, uh, leaf springs uh, with leaf spring mounts, also has individual shocks, okay? The Lynette eye, parking brake, trailer brake. You got your solid axle here. You have your, um, uh, your hub sections uh, along with brake backing plates, which are completely detailed with brake eccentrics and adjustments on the back, which is awesome. Uh, you don't even see that in the larger scale kits. Uh, looks like we have two different types of um, uh, trailer stands here. Uh, we'll look and see what those options are. We've got the fenders, the front and the back. Here's the front, here's the back, and the two side panels and the bed. And of course you have combat rims, uh, which are very well molded uh, with all the uh, nuts and bolts that are in there, okay? Even the undercarriage of the trailer is represented as far as the framework is concerned and the relief uh, bends in the sheet metal uh, that's on the real thing, so very nice. The sprue, letter D, has a lot of your miscellaneous parts and components for uh, finishing off the kit. You have a front clip, your hood, your cowling, um, here's the dash that mounts to the cowling, your windshield frame, um, here's the rifle carrier. Let me flip this over. All right, so th this is really nice. If you look at right here, this is the spare tire carrier that's on the vehicle and uh, it's very well uh, molded. Obviously, the mold process comes in through the front now and pulls out as well as separates in half in this direction. So it allows companies to come up with a, uh, you know, much more detail when it comes to, to these kits. But this thing is just super detailed. And, I, and the reason I say that is, you know, we have our pivot points here, right? These are our headlight mounts, okay? They go from here to the fender. Even though the headlights are represented on the, the, uh, the radiator and the cowling and everything, um, those things will all line up and it'll pretty much be transparent to you as you see them through the grill, okay? Uh, you've got a grease gun here, which mounts to the inside of the hood. You have, um, right here, here is the fire extinguisher, the pyrene fire extinguisher that goes on the inside of the tub. Side view mirror, okay? Steering linkage, all right? You got your Ross steering gearbox right here uh, included with that. This is a complete steering linkage system, inner and outer tie rod ends. You have a bell crank right here, all right, which is which the inner tie rod ends both double up on that single portion of the bell crank. All right, you've got your drag link from here to here. And uh, so it's just, they didn't miss any details. A real nice uh, copy of a Willard battery. The top of the radiator to include the two-part radiator hose, which these two are rubber, and you got the, the, the metal piece in here, and the clamps are even molded on there, which is pretty awesome. All right, we got a skid plate that goes underneath. Just like the real one, the exhaust system runs to the top of that plate and is bolted to that plate for security. And um, yeah, we've got our high-low gear, uh, in and out four-wheel drive shift knobs, our standard shifter right there, um, everything here is pretty well taken care of. This right here, you'll notice that the windshield frame is just the outer frame. And the reason that is, is because they've molded in clear plastic the inner frame that goes in here, which allows you to position the windshield up or closed along with the support rods uh, that go on either side of this to support that inner windshield frame. And those are part of the photo wedge um, piece that they have in the kit. 
okay? This is the back of the Jeep, right? You got your uh, left and right marker lights. Your, refle your reflectors are, are molded in here and the locations for your spare tire mount and your um, jerry can are right here along with the jerry can. This is, so this is interesting. This little strap, this little hook right here is, is part of the jerry can um, strapping system. So it's gonna be interesting to see if we have any type of strap material to go with this. But I'm gonna explain to you why they molded this piece separately in just a second. When you flip it over and you look to the inside, um, all the cross member supports and everything are there, just like on the real Jeep. Now, why do I know this? Because I actually built one of these vehicles, a real one, uh, from the ground up. The mounting location is right here and here for the grease gun. You have, check out the hinge work on this hood. Now, this is 135th scale, mind you. And uh, they took the time to even get the hinges in place. Lube order chart molded into the hood right here. Okay. Very nice. On sprue A, we have a lot of the engine components represented here to include the jerry can uh, that mounts to the rear of the vehicle. And they're just pinned, so that'll fit on it without a problem. Got individual handles and jerry can caps. Okay, the only thing I don't like about this kit so far that I'm seeing is the fact that the top bows here, here, and here are in three pieces. Now, maybe that'll, it'll, you know, as later on as I build this and uh, discover that, um, uh, that it goes together very well, I won't complain about it. But for now, um, yeah, uh, I'm a little skittish about the fact that it's a three-piece unit for a top bow. Okay, grab handles. We've got a corner grab handles and the side grab, grab handles here. Pintle hook. Uh, check out this right here, ignition coil. All right, this right here, that's your air pump that goes underneath the, uh, the passenger seat in the back. The L134 engine block is super detailed, okay, uh, to the point that the, the, the port for the oil pump, which is right here, and the distributor, and right here for the, uh, the dipstick tube are, boom, you can see right into them. Um, boy, that just leaves a lot of opportunities for anybody that wants to try and do any uh, detail work, okay? You've got your intake manifold right here. Spark plugs are represented there. Um, you have your, okay, here's your, uh, your main pulley system. Um, you've got your horn, your Spartan horn. We've got our generator components here. We have our dipstick tube there. Um, just a, you know, intake manifold, Carter, WO uh, carburetor right there. Very nice shape, okay? Transmission, your T84 transmission. You have your oil um, filter, which is located here. That's the canister for that. So you can see it. They just really covered down on a lot of stuff, uh, which is awesome. Parking brake drum, okay? Transfer case. The Ma Deuce, the 50 caliber, which mounts to this M31C mount. Very well detailed and uh, crafted. Here's your air cleaner with the crossover tube going to the carburetor. That's the carburetor horn right there. All right, here's the front of the motor with the timing cover. Bell, or excuse me, the bell housing. Your starter mounts right there. I mean, the fact that they took the time to mold in into the bell housing where the starter goes and the bushing is incredible. All right. So uh, you have that to do, uh, to work with, uh, a nice fan, fan blade. So yeah, this, this kit is just really awesome. Here's the other half of the Mod Deuce. Obviously the top is removable, uh, which normally you see these things as a solid unit. So that's gonna be really interesting to get all that detail um, out of that. So of course we have our shovel and our ax right here. Check out this right here. These are the hold downs for the hood and for the windshield. These will mount to the hood. Um, here's another set right here. All right, this right here, that mounts behind the passenger seat in the rear. This is your hand crank to, uh, to crank over the engine. And what's really gonna be interesting is to take this and see if it actually fits through that hole on this cross member, because this is the front cross member um, for the Jeep. I'm just totally blown away by the detail that's in this kit.
sprue, C, all of your combat rims, all right, including your spare wheel uh, is located here. And uh, they definitely got the, uh, the hubs correct for the front and the rear, uh, which is nice. And so you have your, uh, I don't have my, I uh, can't tell right now if those things are scalloped or not, but the type of hubs that are on there along with the dust caps are present to include all of the nuts and bolts, or excuse me, the bolt heads for the split rims that go inside there. All right, now one of the details that I've noticed right away when I took a look at this earlier um, was the backing plates right here for the brakes. Uh, if you notice a pin here, here, and the two in the bottom, those are your eccentrics, okay? You use those to adjust the brake shoes that are behind these plates. And uh, there's a certain setting for those things um, when you make your brake adjustments. But the fact that they took a detail like this, put it into a model that is this small, and you're probably not even gonna see it when it's on display, um, is a testament to uh, how much this company cares about accuracy, okay? Same thing with the uh, the axles. I mean, the axles just look awesome. The shocks actually have holes through where the shock bushings are for mounting purposes. We've got crash pads here. The seats, accurately molded, all right? They look great. They have individual seat pads here. And what's nice about this one here, although there's, there's some design issues here with... Uh, but this particular plate um, gives you access to the fuel tank. All right, look at that. You can see the fuel tank cap and the fuel sending unit and the straps are even molded into the, into the tank. And when I show you the tub, you'll see that there's a, um, a sump in the tub for this fuel tank to sit into. So you're gonna be able to see the tank under the seat, all right, underneath the pad. So you can probably mold it however you want to do it when you build it. Put this thing in an up position, maybe take a troop strap and, and hold it back, which is what I do when I fuel it up. Um, but the point is, is that they included details that you're not even going to see, which I think is awesome and leaves this kit wide open for all kinds of custom um, possibilities. Torque reaction spring right here, all right? This is on the front driver's side of the vehicle. Uh, pretty well molded, looks looks great. This is your machine gun mount. This mounts to the framework, all right? Uh, in fact, the slots you see here will fit on the cross member of the, uh, uh, of the vehicle. The differential covers, the pumpkins, are separate. I would have been shocked if I'd have saw some kind of gearing inside these rear ends. But you know what, though? They left it hollow enough that you could actually probably put something in there that looks like you got the rear end tore apart. So I love the fact that I had that option, okay? And uh, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna explore that when we build this particular model. All right, looks great. All right, let's look at the, uh, the tub and the, uh, the frame. And we'll start with the tub. All right, so the tub, what I liked about the, uh, the fact that they put the back of the, the tub as a separate unit uh, is for a couple of reasons. One, they have all, uh, all the internal framework on the back side where the rear seat mounts, where the uh, the engine uh, crank handle mounts, all those kinds of things. But it allows you to have open toolboxes back here, which on other kits, these are just simply molded over and it's a solid unit, right? So you have the option of having access to the toolboxes under here. And... Uh, That'll take a little bit of finagling because the toolboxes on this particular sprue, they are molded in here. So a careful modeler would cut this out and you can see where the hinge locations are and mount just this piece uh, in here and then be able to have these doors open or closed. Okay, so lots of options there. The only thing that I would have done differently on this particular tub is that I would have I would have made these uh, the footrest here a separate unit, okay. And the other thing that I don't see in the model kit is there's a shield that goes between this footrest and up to the back of the seat. Now that may be in the kit and I may have overlooked it, but there but that is an opportunity for something that's scratch built. Inside here, you can see that they have this uh, bus bar or junction block right here for the power supply. Uh, this will feed a potential radio system that would mount in this location. 
You can notice the sump right here for the fuel tank. And uh, yeah, that looks great. Even the, uh, the plates are molded and the little bolt heads are in place where this uh, transmission plate covers is uh, to be removed to including this little round one here, which is where your master cylinder uh, is accessed, okay? To check your fluid levels. Your steering column goes through here, your accelerator pedal, okay? And uh, your clutch and everything, that's all goes through those locations. Your mounts for your top bows are molded into the sides here and uh, they're pretty intricate. So we'll be, uh, we'll be careful when we build that. All right, looks good, looks good. Now, something I can't, I don't know if the camera will pick this up and it might not, but there's three sets of dimples right here going down the side, one, two, and three. Okay, the opposite side of that, right along this ridge line is where your fire extinguisher goes, the pyrene fire extinguisher. So it's very cool that they captured those, uh, those screw heads. Okay, framework. Remember the machine gun mount? That goes right here. And uh, they really did a good job on this particular frame. Uh, I gotta be careful, my hands are cold. So we've got our gussets. Okay, we've got our body mounts in here, okay? Uh, this cross member, this is where the transmission mounts. Uh, they even went as far as to put the, um, the, uh, the pivot tube, which goes between the frame and the, uh, the transmission transfer case. This is where the brake and uh, clutch linkage uh, mounts up to. And so I'm interested to see if they actually have linkage that goes from here going into the bell housing. So if they do, um, I'm definitely gonna highlight that when I build the kit. Motor mounts are in place. Mounts for the radiator are right there, okay? Super, super accurate. Same thing with the shock mounts, okay? They're located on top. And they have little pins for the shocks to mount to. And the gussets right here on the front end, you'll notice, you, you know, I don't know if you can see the light through there. That's exactly how the real Jeep is. So they did an awesome job on on developing um, this setup right here. Okay. If you really want to get detailed and you start running the brake lines, you would feed a brake line right through that channel. Okay. And then it would come out to the axle. But we might even consider that when we build it. All right. So let's set that aside. Take a look at the, uh, your windshield options. This might be difficult to see. Let me see if I have something, something a little bit darker that I can show you. It's molded with and without windshield wipers. Uh, these are the inside uh, frames and you have your headlight lenses as well. So if you choose to go with uh, the version without wipers, because most of the original older Jeeps, you might see a single manual wiper on there. And what they've done is they've given you the option to do just that. Uh, I think, uh, let's do this, this is better. All right, you can see the individual wiper blades here. So what I would do is I would put a single wiper blade, a manual blade on the driver's side. These little hooks right here, these are the hooks that go for the troop straps that run between um, where the crash pads are on the on the hip of the vehicle, okay, up to the front. So if you were to put troop straps in, you got your loops, all right? And um, what you can see here, this piece and this piece, these are part of the adjustment arms, which mount to the side of the windshield. And basically when the windshield goes out, they're the arms that are supporting it. So they actually captured those as well in a photo etched, uh, photo etched part. So yeah, this looks really good. I'm pretty excited about this kit. Here is the, let's get this stuff out of the way. Here is the MP driver. All right, multiple pieces, very uh, fine details. He does have a full size head, which means the helmet's hollowed out like it should be. 
and so you can fit that helmet on his head in whatever position you want. Um, and of course the neck is recessed into the collar here. So yeah, this is gonna be a, a, a nice looking figure and the instructions do a pretty fine job of showing you how things are colored as well. That's sprue E. Okay, here's your decal set. And you can see you have the options of military police, uh, the damn Yankee, whatever there is, you know, another military police here. Uh, you have invasion stars, you've got standard stars. It really depends, look at that little MP uh, decal for the uh, guy's helmet. So you've got data plates right here. You have all of your gauges, okay, for in the vehicle. Uh, bumper numbers, different hood numbers, whether you want to make a Marine Corps version or Army version. So they give you plenty of options here to work with. Uh, which is nice. So all in all, that's a pretty awesome kit. And I'm really excited to get started on it. And I think when I do, um, because of the level of detail that's inside this thing, uh, I might depict a scene of my own build experience of when the Jeep was in pieces. So we'll have a complete chassis, fully detailed out, okay? That's this little guy. It's gonna be on a rolling chassis. And we're going to have this thing sort of semi-assembled and standing up on its end on some dollies as I'm working on the wiring and running fuel lines and doing things like that uh, to give it that in-process build look uh, diorama, right, of my shop. That's kind of what I'm doing. So I'm pretty happy with this model. I hope you like the review. And again, this is the TACOM. Uh, you can see the light of the, uh, of the camera. But this is the TACOM kit 135th scale and i think it's uh i don't know it's in the 25 to 35 dollar range you have to go out there and look but i really hope that these guys make a 1 6 scale version of this kit with this much detail if not more um i do have other kits dragon for instance that are 1 6 scale they do not have a level of detail that this little teeny tiny 135th scale model does so that's it. Thanks for watching, and uh, visit us next time here at Watson's Wagons as we review another kit.